My name is Pete Quinoso. I teach yoga in San Francisco and around the world. Uh, I teach a vinyasa based class. I've been practicing yoga for almost 16 years and teaching yoga for 10. Um, well, I think if you ask 10 different people, you get 10 different answers. And it's really a really good question to ask, Alex. Um, I'm just going to offer up my experience. Yoga was a way, it was really active for me. It was a very physical experience when I first started practicing. It still is that way. But after about six months of practicing, I began to notice that, uh, and it was a consistent practice, I began to notice that I was a little bit more chill. I wasn't as stressed out. Um, I was practicing, I felt like I was practicing more compassion. I was connected to um, speaking my truth and being more truthful. And so I, I think yoga can be many things for, for different people. It can, um, it can be a workout, it can be a way to de-stress, it can be a way to connect to the emotional body. Some people use it to connect to spirit. That's one of the ways I use it as well. Uh, it, the, the thing that keeps coming back to is the true definition, which means union, right? And union with divine, union with breath, union with body, mind, spirit. And uh, so if I had to say in one little succinct sentence, yoga is a way to, to reconnect to mind, body, spirit. It's coming from India, right? Originally, um, it's been around for a long time, 2,500 years. Um, but I think that um, one of the things I like about yoga is that it's it's it, it's it kind of meets us where we're at. Like my joke is that yoga is like the best lover ever. Because you walk into the room, it says, where are you at? I'm going to meet you there. If you haven't been around for a while, it still kind of walks up to you and reaches out with open arms, says, come on in, I've missed you. Um, but that being said, what you get out of yoga, like any relationship, is what you put into it. Mm -hmm. So the more you practice, the more you get out of it. Um, and so the teacher, from my perspective, wh where we're learning about yoga is every moment. Every moment is teaching us about yoga. Yoga is in every moment. It's in the practice. It is my interaction with a homeless person. It's my interaction greeting you. Alex, I don't know you. Hi, Alex. I look you in the eye. I say, welcome to the studio. <laughs> Let's go talk. And so yoga uh, teaching comes from India, but the yoga teachings are all around us. Because I think people are looking for something that feels authentic to them. This is my, my approach. I was raised Catholic and I was a, a person that enjoyed um, religion and uh, spirituality, but it didn't really feel like it connected to my heart. And so I shifted away from Catholicism and uh, I would have called myself an agnostic for a while. And I used to, I was a big outdoors person. I was a big runner, a big cycler, a big bicycle person. And so I would do these long rides and connect to nature. But I think um, yoga is a form of spirituality that has very little to no dogma. That there's an authentic approach that you bring to it. Uh, it's... And so from that perspective, the reason why it's become so popular is because I think people have shifted away from the traditional, they're shifting away from traditional religions to find their own spirituality in some ways. Okay. That being said, it's also very athletic. So it can be a workout as well. You're connecting to body, mind, spirit, and your practice. And thirdly, it is a way to connect to community. Since community, most people were finding community in churches. They would find community in bars. They find community through sports. And so this is kind of combining all okay. those things, right? You're in class, you're kind of getting a natural high from the yoga practice. You don't have to go to a bar to get that. And um, 
and it's a kind of athletic ende ende endeavor, so it's very much uh, people, it's kind of fulfilling a need that people have about connecting to each other. I was dating a, a girl who suggested I try yoga, uh -huh. and uh, being a uh, a hardcore athlete, I thought yoga was going to be really easy, and I was like, I don't want to do that. I'd rather ride a 100 mile bike mm -hmm. ride instead. And she turned me on to a bunch of videos, and I started kind of doing some videos at home, and that kind of planted the seed in me, and then... I broke it off with her and started dating a, a, an actual yoga instructor, and so I go <laughs> take her classes. That helps. And uh, she she started inspiring me on this path, and then I broke it off with her, and then I started practicing lots and lots of yoga, and I fell in love with it because, as I mentioned, it was really athletic. It was harder than I thought it was going to be, and um, it was much more challenging than I thought. And that started my path, and I started working with a woman named Anna Forrest, who was amazing about creating a scenario in a safe place where people could explore yoga from an emotional perspective. People, mm -hmm. I went to her first class in 2003, and people were crying, they were yelling, they were emoting, and it was kind of weird, but I was also intrigued by that, because I'm like, what the hell's going on here, you know? Yeah. So I got hooked from the, the physical pr perspective, but then it connected into a lot more. Well, um, I think there's, you can put them in little boxes, I guess, Alex, because there's the physical challenge. Yeah. I was an athlete who had not done much to stretch his body as much as I should have. And so I kind of came in as a typical male athlete, tight everywhere. Yeah. Everything was a challenge for me physically. I remember being in pigeon pose, which people, most people would say is a really simple pose. Not and I couldn't, me. <laughs> I, yeah, right, thank you, Alex. It wasn't for me for a couple of years. But I couldn't even come forward in pigeon because I was so tight in my hips. Mm -hmm. And so physically at first it was really challenging and it still is challenging. Um, but, you know, there's also one of the things we try to do in yoga is to start to quiet our mind and let the thoughts go. And that still continues to be one of the biggest challenges for me is working with my mind. And I can, I imagine it's going to be that way pretty much for the rest of my life. Yeah. And then the third thing is kind of, you know, um, working with the challenges of of peeling back the onions because uh, the yoga practice allows us to see things a lot more clearly and to do that we need to get out of our head but we also need to stay with the poses for a longer period of time so you know it's like okay when my thoughts process comes in how do I work with the thoughts to stay with the pose and I want to go to the next pose I'm like okay just take a moment take a deep breath take five more deep breaths in this pose mm -hmm. so those are a couple of the challenges Yeah, um, my lifestyle is that uh, I don't I, I I don't party as much as I used to. <laughs> it's hard to go out and go out to a bar, go out and have a drink with friends, or you know, um, hang out to late night because if I'm I want to be able to practice yoga and teach, I need to be on so I don't go out as much as I used to. I think getting married helped that as well. Uh -huh. <laughs> um, but I, you know, I just, I feel, I, so let me kind of back up a little bit. One of the things, we are kind of born into this world with this really open heart and um, over years we start to create armoring around our heart because we've been hurt We've been disappointed from people that we care about. And over time, this R ring is around our heart and it makes it harder for us to love and cultivate kindness for people and to, to, to be just a, a good person. And, and I would say for the most part, I, I was always a good and kind person. 
But one of the things I noticed is that when I practice yoga, and I also combine meditation into mm -hmm. what I'm doing, that I started to kind of break down the armor around my heart and, and to step away from my story and be more compassionate and kind and, and more involved with the world. That's kind of how I feel like it's happening. I feel like I'm more engaged with the world than I ever have been before. So that, that's the biggest change? Uh, I think so, yeah. Just, just taking a moment and, you know, cultivating compassion in a, con a moment of possible conflict. You know, I've been in scenarios where I've, um, I've had to step in physically because um, I, I've seen people acting out of uh, anger and it comes from a place of compassion and it's a way, uh, instead of escalating the situation, I've learned how to de-escalate because that's because I've been able to work that with them in my own mind and in, in my practice as well. Well, uh, I mean, if you're a new yoga teacher, one of the challenges is paying your mortgage or rent, you know, just <laughs> living. It's really challenging financially. Uh, I think that, um, you know, I worked for more pharmaceuticals for 14 years. Mm -hmm. I was making really good money. And uh, when I decided to pursue yoga as my primary income, I was making a fifth of what I was making and, and Mark. So financially it can be challenging. Um, I think the biggest thing though, as I've grown as a teacher is that you're presented with your stuff, your, as I would say, shit, part of my language, you can bleep blue out if you need to. Um, meaning that, um, for example, as a teacher, when I show up uh, and there's a lot of people in my class, it feeds my ego. Mm -hmm. And I kind of start making it about me and kind of what I'm doing. And, um, and, and then the next day, not too many people show up and I'm like, oh, it's about my ego. And I go, oh, I guess I'm not a good teacher, right? And uh, it's the, the, the practice that, that's, that becomes a practice of mine. How can I show up authentically for my students if even if there's not too many people there it's about it's about letting go of my ego and focusing on helping this one person even if it's just one person in my class helping them to breathe just a little easier or to have a great experience or to explore a pose they've never done before or to breathe into a body part that they've been holding tension for a long time and once I start to shift away from my ego's need to be seen, because that's pretty much what it is, is to be seen, I can provide a space and support people by being seen. So there's no separation between the healer and the healed. Once I step in to help one person, I'm helping myself. So we have to, you, that happens all the time, and it's a good reminder all the time that it's not about me, it's about me teaching yoga and supporting someone. Um, we have a, a saying in, as a yoga teacher is one thing is true about yoga it'll change your life if you don't want to change your life don't do yoga so yoga is transformational both physically both mentally uh, both emotionally both uh, spiritually or both all four ways <laughs> <laughs> and so um, it's transformative if you're if if you're not liking how your life is going right now, yoga could be a good uh, tool to help change your life in a way for the better. I mean, from a physical perspective, it's, I love doing arm balances. Mm -hmm. They're always lots of fun. But as my practice has grown, I've, I've shifted away from focusing so much on favorite poses and it's really about just being present. My favorite asana right now is placing my hand on my heart and breathing up into the moment. And I can practice that anytime. If I'm working through a conflict with my wife, if we're arguing about something, take a moment just breathing and feeling. Or if I am taking in the beauty of a sunset I can take in more about that and breathe up to my heart by taking the beauty of the world. 
So that's my favorite asana right now. Okay. Thank you, Pete. Yeah, thank you, Alex. Have a good day, bud. Namaste. Namaste.